I may just be in love. Why you ask? Because I've just flown on Finna's new business class on a two hour route within Europe. I didn't expect it to be this good in reality. And there are so many mixed reviews about this very unique product. So sit back, relax and watch as we love every minute on board Finna's Airbus A350. Trams, boats, and pancakes, that can only mean one thing. If you can't tell from today's backdrop, I'm in the city of Amsterdam. Now, besides being in one of the funnest cities in the world, today's journey is pretty exciting because there are two reasons why this is quite unusual. The first is, One World has just opened a new lounge. And the second is, for some reason, Finnair has decided to put an Airbus A350-900 on the route to Helsinki, which is pretty incredible because normally it's an A321. Amsterdam is such a beautiful city. Who doesn't love the canals? The interesting architecture is also known for other reasons. And also, lots of naughtiness. <laughs> Having flown in on KLM, this was a great way to spend a few hours. But now I must head to Amsterdam Central Station to catch the very frequent train service to Schiphol Airport. At 10 euros for a day return, in my view, that's very well spent. Schiphol Airport is just south of the city centre, taking about 25 minutes by taxi or 20 minutes by train, at only 11 miles from Central Station. Depending on which escalator you use, departures is one level up. Head towards the back of the train station concourse and head up the very long escalators past all the shops. I still have 4 hours until my flight, but luckily at Schiphol I can check in now using the self-service machine. You need to scan your passport first in order to print your baggage tag and get your boarding card. You can also email it as well. And then head over to this slightly intimidating machine, which once you've figured it out, these are pretty cool. If you enjoy watching planes, be sure to head to Panorama, which is just above the Zone 2 check-in desk. The free viewing area on the top of Schiphol Airport has lots of exciting plane movement, including this Emirates Boeing 777 freight plane. It's also home to, pardon my language, this XKLM Fokker 100 jet, which hasn't flown since 2011. And you can even step inside or just take plenty of photos. Just be mindful that if you're coming outside of summer, it can be really cold up here. But that's okay, because you can always take refuge from the weather at the restaurant, which is just behind the airplane. Immigration was surprisingly smooth, unlike the return journey. Now, we have to discuss something. Today's flight to Helsinki will depart from the D-Gate, and as a result, makes use of the Aspire Lounge number 26, because both Amsterdam and Helsinki are part of the Schengen Agreement. However, I must go and see the very new and not so long opened One World Lounge, which is in the International Terminal. As a result, this means passing through passport control, but I can't stress this enough, you need to allow enough time to pass back through passport control in order to catch the flight. This is pretty exciting, because I have been in here plenty of times before, but back when it was a British Airways lounge and it was nice enough. At key airports around the world, one world of which all these airlines belong, are creating hub lounges, which now include Amsterdam, Seoul and Los Angeles. In order to access here, you'll need to be travelling in business class or have sapphire or higher frequent flyer status. I admit, I didn't research the lounge before coming, so I had no idea what to expect. I didn't want to be influenced by someone else's opinion. I'm impressed with how big it feels, and notice they made clever use of the huge space that was the welcome desk for the British Airways lounge entrance. This is now a slightly quirky but very inviting sort of chill out area with some comfy lounges. 
If you're a wine connoisseur or a foozy, then the selection will probably not blow you away. There was one variety of white rosé and red wine, and the buffet is a sort of continental breakfast, but at lunchtime. I was eager to try Wombold's anniversary cocktail named the 25, which was released only last week. But unfortunately the bartender has not been trained yet, so doesn't know how to make one. The sparkly lemon black tea and mojito went down a treat. Not too much alcohol and just the right level of sweetness. Really good lounge. I love the design. Showers unfortunately there's only two and they weren't available till 7.50 which is like three hours so there's absolutely no point in waiting for those. I imagine it also gets quite busy later on in the day. So far today was going well but Amsterdam Schiphol Airport can be unpredictable. I was at the gate within 15 minutes of leaving the lounge. I did take a quick stop to check out the recommended Aspire third party lounge but while it looked pleasant it was extremely busy so I didn't bother going in. Finnair's European network, with the exception of London, is typically operated with Airbus A320s, A321s and the Brazilian made, which I love, Embraers. So naturally this beautiful white and dark blue Airbus A350 stood out and there was plenty of interest from airport workers and passengers taking lots of photos. Boarding was straightforward with one queue for business class and frequent fly status and the other for economy. This is pretty epic. So I'm been on this plane in about a year and a half, and the last time I was on it was the old product. This is the new product, which is pretty incredible. On the Airbus A350-900, the business class occupies the entire first section of the plane. Rows 2 to 8 are laid out in a 1 to 1 configuration, and personally, I don't think there's any bad seats. This is my seat for the next two hours. And it is incredibly private. And with the captain switching on the seatbelt sign, it was time for the safety video. This is one of my favourites. The music slightly reminds me of the film Soul, if anyone has seen it. No? Oh, just me then. Hello, and welcome on board Finan. Unfortunately, the video wasn't available anywhere, and the music was drowned out by the background noise. What really made this special though was the lighting in the cabin, which was made to mimic the northern lights. Truly beautiful. The seat is incredibly unique because Finnair took the bold move to do away with the mechanisms to go between upright and flat. This saves a lot on weight and gives a lot of versatility to sitting in different positions. Don't worry if you're a sloucher as the cabin crew carry plenty of extra pillows. And I did like the leather and the plush lighting in the footwell. Next to the footwell are two storage compartments. Just be aware, the closest one is incredibly deep, so be sure to double check it before you leave something behind. And this posh looking lightwood plastic side table includes wireless charging, which was a really welcome addition. Should you wish to go old school, this hidden compartment contains the in-flight entertainment controller and various charging ports. 
For most people, that's enough ports. But just in case, there's a universal plug socket just below the seat. Various buttons on the side table control the lighting. Now, I don't consider myself stupid, but I couldn't work out how to release the tray table and spent absolutely ages trying to force it out. Having left in the afternoon, and also being a very short flight, I don't think I'll be doing much sleeping. But even so, every passenger gets these two very aesthetically pleasing pillows. I must give credit to Finnair. Given the restrictions on Russian airspace, they are under greater financial pressure than normal. But they didn't cost cut on the in-flight entertainment. Yes, they could have done with a few more classic movies and TV series, but it's a beautiful interface and more than enough for a two hour flight. Something that British Airways decided not to add was a camera on the tail and under the belly, which is great for the kids and aviation enthusiasts alike. As for the in-flight map, this is one of the best systems I've ever seen. It's incredibly interactive, having many, many different options for layout and position, and you can even zoom into your heart's content and click on major cities. Headphones are provided and they're reasonable, but not amazing. But then again, it's a two hour flight. If you fly them long haul, they provide a much better quality over the ear option. The Wi-Fi appears to be pretty new to Finnair. So as well as choosing a language, you can also read various newspapers and magazines. Audiobooks, Angry Birds anyone? Not sure exactly what they involve. Finnair Plus members get complimentary internet. Otherwise, here were the prices. The meal service kicks off with a very refreshing warm towel. And the cabin crew have very kindly shown me how to release the tray table. Duh, now I feel stupid. And much like the seat, the tray table is really adjustable. You can even escape when it's fully extended. For lunch, there was only one option available, with the starter consisting of potato salad, cranberries and cooked pieces of deer, which was fantastic. Followed by a plate of German pasta, again, no issues here. Great taste and nicely plated. Something which I've only experienced in Finland, and is mind-blowing, is the blueberry juice. I could drink this all day long. Various types of breads were offered, including white rolls and some local favourites. I do love a nice cup of tea. An English breakfast was one of the many that were available. I did also try a variant of the blueberry juice on the way back, but it only comes with honey on the long haul flights. One not to miss. There's no dessert, but you do get a bar of white and milk chocolate which was so good, I bought the larger version at the shop in Helsinki. Besides taking full advantage of what seemed like an unlimited supply of blueberry juice, there was only one thing left to do. If only I could remember. Two at the front and one at the back. That's a ratio of one toilet to every 10 passengers. It's quite amazing how far toilet design has come. They used to be very grey and white, and they still are, but more design touches and this beautiful window make all the difference. It was nice to see local amenities being used. Both the hand wash and the body lotion are products of Finland, with cedar and orange being good choices for fragrance. With the light disappearing, we aren't that far from Helsinki, which is a bit of a shame. I didn't have a chance to try the seat in flat mode, so you'll have to wait for the long haul review later in the year. I mentioned earlier there was a second challenge, and I was not expecting this at all. Amsterdam and Finland, as I mentioned earlier, are both in the Schengen, which means that we should be landing domestically with no passport control. Unfortunately, the designers never expected the Airbus A350 to be used on European routes. Odd, I know. So we'll be parking in the international part of the airport, and after waiting for 10 plus minutes, it turns out that we'll be disembarking from the very back of the plane via a set of stairs and onto a bus. On the plus side, this means you get to see a brief glimpse of the premium economy section and the many, many seats in economy. 
the cabin crew were really nice and kept us entertained while waiting, because you could only really make light of the very unusual occurrence. So I've just had a wonderful stay at the Hilton Hotel, which is just literally around the corner about five minutes walk. I'm so impressed with Finnair and the Airbus A350. I wasn't expecting to love it that much, but it's such a good product. The privacy is incredible. The food was absolutely delicious. I mean, it slightly trumps airlines like British Airways, where sometimes it's just sandwiches in the afternoon, but the German pasta was delicious. Cabin crew are so smiley, and they just seemed genuinely quite happy to work the flight. There was obviously a lot of interest because normally it's an A321 and not an A350, so plenty of people taking photos, and it was an absolute delight. Can't wait to try them on a long haul route. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.